Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to take a look at this. This is the Fully Wen 017. I'm going to take a look at the body, do some size comparisons, we'll do a writing sample, then I'll give you my thoughts and some scores for this pen. Here we are down on the mat with the Fully Wen 017. Quite a busy colourful pen isn't it? Just turn this around. The actual resin itself feels quite nice. Let's start off with a walk through the body. We'll start at the top. So the top of the pen on the cap here we've got a nice dome. All one part of this resin. No seams, nothing like that works really well. As we come down the dome it's curving down you can feel where it goes straight. I mean, you'd expect that anyway, wouldn't you? The cap, then it starts to taper out until it gets about two thirds of the way down, and then it goes straight for the rest of the length of the cap. No clip on this pen. One of the things you've got to be aware of, it rolls, and it rolls quite easily, and it'll keep rolling because there's nothing to stop it. I tend to use a pen rest when I'm using this pen. Bottom of the cap, we've got a drop down, it's not, not the steepest I've seen, not the shallowest, you can feel it. Again, I'm looking for it though. We come down into the body. The body seems to be starting to taper down almost immediately. You can feel about here, about maybe a quarter of the way down, I can feel it actually start to deepen that taper. We go all the way down to the other end. There again, we've got a rounded end. Classic shape, bright colours though. To take the cap off, we go half, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, nearly three turns to take the cap off. What that does reveal though is a section that's in the exact same colouring, so we've got it going all the way through. There's a little bit of a concaveness to the section. And we've got the nib. This is a fully wen nib. Um, this one's a medium. It's in this steel colour. It's a steel nib. I like to see nibs with a bit of two-ton, you know, so there's a bit of contrast there. It's still nice though. So we've got a couple of parallel lines running around the outside. Underneath the breather hole, we've got a logo, then fully wen, then M, then 18kgp. The section, we've already looked at that, but it's comfortable to use. There is a fairly wide lip down here at the bottom but my fingers they fit quite nicely this this that lip because it's got that little bit of width to it doesn't feel like it's digging into my fingers when I'm writing I hold my pens down near the bottom if you hold your pens further up that concaveness really guides your fingers in there really well if you take off the body in here I've got a converter I've got, actually got a shimmer ink in here. You can see a lot of the shimmer there. Metal fittings. So although everything else is resin, because that fitting's metal, I wouldn't suggest I drop in this pen, which is a shame. If that would, if that had been resin, I'd have said this is a contender to be eyedroppered. All in all, though, it's not a bad pen. It looks really nice. I'll say it's very in your face. Let's swap over and do some size comparisons. Here we've got the two standards. We've got the Pilot Metropolitan and the Lamy Safari. These are pens I use in every video. Both of them shorter than the Fully Went 017. The Safari, not by much, maybe about half a centimetre, maybe a little bit less. Width-wise, the Fully Went appears to be wider than both of these. Both the Metropolitan and the Safari, they've got clips, whereas the Fully Wen doesn't. Let's take the caps off and look at these unposted. Unposted, the Safari and the Fully Wen now roughly the same length. You can see the difference in the sections. So we've got the triangular shape there on the Safari. We've got a fairly thin section on the Metropolitan and that section there on the Fully Wen, I find it quite comfortable. Nibs are the other big difference. The nib, number six size nib there on the Fully Wen, means that you can change the nib if you want to. The Safari has got its own style nib, easy to change, just pulls off very, very simply. And then the Metropolitan with that number five size pilot nib. 
If we take a look at the pen in my hand, unposted, I find this pen to be nice and comfortable. It's pleasant, it's a nice length. You can post it, it becomes very back heavy to me, and it feels really long, a bit like a magic wand now. And although it does post, it's not really tight. I mean, yes, I tapped it a couple of times, but that came off quite easily. Let's swap on over and look at some pens in roughly the same price range. The pens I brought in, we've got the Moonman or Marjon S5. That was 37 Aussie dollars. The Fully Wen 017, that was 38 Aussie dollars. And the Hondian 1841, that was 40 Aussie dollars. All three pens are mainland China made. Look at the big differences between them though. The S5, this is an eyedropper pen, whereas both the others are cartridge fillers. The nib on the S5 is a lot smaller. And we've got this, I've got to be honest, it's one of these sections that I absolutely hate. I think it looks really out of character with the rest of the pen. If that had been transparent as well, that would have looked really nice. Small nib. On the Fully Wen and the 1841, the nib on the 1841 looks slightly shorter, only ever so slightly shorter, but I think it's also a number six size nib. I do like the classic colour in here on the 1841. It's something that's more suitable for taking to meetings when this 017 isn't. The section though does look quite a lot smaller. Let's pop the caps on. With the caps on, the Fully Wen still the longest of the bunch. Only a little bit again, I would say the S5 comes in second, then that 1841 is slightly shorter. It's the width that makes a difference. The Fully Wen a lot wider than both of those. Let's swap on over and fetch in the rule of measuring. Here we've got the rule of measuring, let's fetch in the pen. So with the cap, the cap on, and if I can stop it from rolling away, it comes in at 14.4 centimetres. Unposted, just straighten the rule a bit, that comes in at 13 centimetres. Posted, I'll say it does post, but not very well. There we're talking about 17.3 centimetres. The width of the body at its widest part down here, that's 1.6 centimetres. The cap at its widest part at the bottom is 1.8 centimetres. The section goes from 1.1 up to 1.3 centimeters so a fairly nice size there let's swap on over and fetch in the scales of weighing here's the scales of weighing the full pen 29 grams 21 grams for the body and 9 grams that's for the cap remember we have got ink in here as well let's swap on over and fetch in the notepad of testing just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out. And as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos. And then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members. All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel. A link will be in the description down below. Here we've got the notepad of testing. This is Ayush paper, 100 GSM paper, made in India. It's got a slight cream color and I can feel a nice bit of texture on the paper as well. Now, I'm agitating the pen a bit. I've been doing that whilst I've been setting up. So hopefully that shimmer will be mixed in. I will be honest, I don't see a lot of performance with the shimmer in this ink. Well, I think I'm calling it shimmer. I think it's actually a chameleon, which is just a very fine shimmer. But let's see what happens. So we'll do some writing. So we've got here the Fully Wen 017. It's got a medium nib. And as I said, I paid 38 Aussie dollars. I generally get my Chinese pens or mainland Chinese pens from AliExpress. 
the ink by Diamine and it's Celebration. This was part of the 2022 ink vent calendar. So it's a nice color. It's not a color I would normally go for, but it does pick out certainly these more peachy and orangey tones in the pen. Drying times, immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Nearly dry there. One minute. After a minute there, yeah, we're nice and dry. So I've continued agitating this. What I'm trying to do is get as much of that chameleon into the solution as possible. Let's look at some line variation. So here's no pressure. Here's with pressure. So with pressure, yeah, you get a slightly wider line. No pressure with none, with none, and with none, and with. I'm going to move the mic down to the page and write a sentence. That's quite smooth. Don't get a lot of feedback from it. Remember, there is a slight texture to this paper as well, so I expect to get a bit of feedback. It's nice. I do find, depending on the paper, it can be a bit glassy for me. It all really depends on your preference. I mean, for me, I like a bit of feedback on my pens. Flow test. So here's going forward. And here's going the other way. Keeps up really well. I do like this ink colour. I think it's very unusual. Not really an ink colour I would normally use. It's a bit like maybe a peachy tone. So let me lift this up to the camera. Can we see any of that shimmer coming through? I can't. And oh, maybe a little bit on the word celebration. There's a little tiny bit. This has been one of the things I've found with this. I do not get to see a lot of that shimmer. And sometimes I have to take a really close up photo to be able to see it. So what are my thoughts and scores for this pen? We'll start with pen looks. It's a bright coloured pen, isn't it? It's very colourful, very, very busy. Not something I would take to a business meeting, I will be honest with you. But for use at home, even going into a cafe or somewhere like that, I'd be more than happy to sit and use this pen. You know, it certainly attracts the attention. Looks quite nice, feels nice as well. Pen looks, 9 out of 10. Build quality, had no issues. The threads are nice and smooth. Threads taking the body off, you know, we're going resin to resin, nice and smooth. It feels nice, it feels solid, it doesn't feel like a flimsy pen. Build quality, 8 out of 10. Writing experience. I've already said it's got a very smooth nib and for me I do find it's too smooth. Depends on taste though. You know if you like smooth nibs this would be really nice for you. I like that bit of feedback. I know I could do something about that. I could do some passes with some micro mesh to try and roughen it up a bit. I'm not going to bother. It writes, gives me a good line. Not exactly how I enjoy it but I can live with that. So for writing experience 8 out of 10. Ink flow, just going to swap an over and we'll fetch in my Tomai River paper. This is 52 GSM Tomai River paper. Looks very light on this paper. You know, Normally you can see through to the previous page anyway. The previous page has got a similar colour, Edelstein garnet. It's nice. I see, see quite a bit of shading coming through. I've called out here about the chameleon needing to actually need to take a photograph and then zoom in. That's the only way I can usually see it. Ink flow, generally good. But what I've found with this ink, I have problems. 
it's because of that shimmer, because of that chameleon, it seems to either block the feed or the nib. So after a couple of pages, it would just stop writing and I need to prime the feed, which you'd have noticed when I showed you the converter earlier. You can see I've had to prime the feed and push it down that far. I've had non-shimmer inks in this pen, which have not caused me a problem. So the previous ink I had in here was Diamine Bliss, which was a nice blue ink. Beauty of this pen, you can use virtually any color ink because it's got all the colors in there. But be aware with shimmer inks, there may be some issues. All that said though, for Inkflow, I'm still gonna give it an eight out of 10. Comfort, it's comfortable to use. It's nice fit in the hand. I like the size of the section. That's nice and comfy. My fingers don't feel squashed together. If you hold your pens further up, again, nice width there. It feels nice and comfy. Comfort, eight out of 10. Value for money. Always an interesting question. It's a $38 pen, so it's a 38 Aussie dollar pen. Not overly priced then. It's nice, it writes well, it's comfortable to use. For the most part, it's enjoyable to use. I say the issues that I've had have mainly been around the ink. I wouldn't be happy taking it into a professional setting. So that's one thing I've got to be aware of. And when I bought that, I knew it. And I bought it with the intention of not using it in a professional setting. So for $38, I think it's fairly good value for money. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. So that means that the total score for the Fully Win 017 with Diamine Celebration is 8.17 out of 10. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got a Fully Win pen? Have you got this model of pen? What finish have you got on it? What do you think about it? How do you find it for writing? Please drop your comments down below. Let's kick start a conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like. Every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.